Welcome, my beautiful Leos. This is going to be your September 2024 reading. Um, this is going to be for Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Uh, those intuitively guided, thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Um, you know, I feel like that's what divine timing is all about. Um, something nudges you towards a reading and, you know, maybe you don't even know if you have Leo in your chart. Well, that I feel is your spirit guides. And because uh, I read through our spirit guides, you know, I feel like my guides connect to your guides. I don't feel it. I know it. Um, so, and by the way, you can definitely ask your guides to give you confirmation during a reading, you know, whether that be like you start to feel like angel bumps or, um, you ask for a certain word, a number, whatever it may be. I feel like your guides will, you know, they will give you confirmation. Um, you could certainly be in love with a Leo, whether platonically or romantically, um, and if that's the case, same thing. Your guides know you're here. So you'll probably receive messages yourself also. Uh, so what I've been doing this month is I've been I've been reading opposite signs. And your office is Aquarius. And I, I did theirs yesterday. And I have to say, you are all through their reading. So some of you may be connected to an Aquarius. But the reason why I'm doing opposites is because... We can really learn a lot from our opposite side and they, that, and they, us, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, but I, I kind of love, this is the first time I've ever done it this way. And it is certainly not going to be the last. I just love how, you know, the synchronicities. I'm hoping your reading is going to be a little lighter than Aquarius's. Theirs was kind of difficult, but, you know, it got much better at the end. So, um, anyway, so let me give a shout out to the Leos in my life. Um, uh, my grandson, uh, Lexington, who is July 23rd, right on that cusp. Um, uh, my mom, who was August 5th, my son, who was August 12th, um, my beautiful soul sister, Diane, who is the 16th, and my boyfriend, Sam, is Virgo. But he's right on the cusp of Leo and Virgo. And he was born um, at like 1 o'clock in the morning. So he definitely carries a lot of Leo traits. Uh, so anyway, I hope I didn't forget anyone. Um, so again, we're doing things a little differently this month. You are the last reading. And I often feel the last reading is the best reading. So fingers crossed, right? Uh, another thing we're doing this month is we're bringing back the major arcanas and I'm really using these as a bullet point. You know, I'm shooting for three to four cards. So I'm not going to deny anything that comes out, but that's what I'm shooting for. And again, they're like bullet points. Um, they could be their very own messages. I'm not really reading them as people, though I will give you that sign. Um, so let's just go ahead and get right into your reading. So we're going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. We are going to use the Gilda Trail to go deeper and deep we will go. Um, you know, it's funny because Aquarius, this reading was like two hours long, but it's exactly what it needed to be. Uh, and I am using the same decks for you know, opposite signs, because I am looking for definitely synchronicities. We are going to use the universal tarot for your main spread. But we are going to start with Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. Let it be. Let it be. All right. Let's go ahead and give them a cut. And officially open this reading up oh. i would always advise before you watch a reading take a moment and just kind of like calm the mind um trust in your guides and um you know whenever you feel ready hit play all right well that didn't take long feminine feminine I allow my feminine nature to shine brightly as a valuable part of my identity. 
you know, that reminds me of like the Empress and the Emperor. You know, um, we are both feminine and masculine, light and dark, you know, and we want to know that we have all those sides to ourselves. But this month, it seems to be calling out your feminine side. Mm, interesting. Um, so we'll put that right there. And I'll probably pull another one at the end of the reading also. That just seems to be the way it's been going. So we'll see. But I have I already have a feeling that I will. All right, let's give the Major Arcanas a shuffle or two. Not a lot of cards to shuffle. Again, these, this is going to be like the bullet points of the reading. You'll see. You'll see how they tie back. Um, and they always do. All right. Let's go ahead and start the tarot portion. We have mm, the magician, the manifester. You know, uh, for some reason, I feel like some of you could have a life path, number one. And, you know, if you do, remember that, you know, you are the magician. This is about manifesting. This is also also the fool's first mentor along the journey of the tarot. And the magician is teaching the fool that you truly possess everything you need to be successful on this new journey. It may signify that there is something new opening up. It's also your power, though. Um, you know, I feel like when we're manifesting, remember, the best way to do it is work hand in hand with divine, you know, like they'll give you the signs, but then it's up to us to follow those signs. So, oh, there's a card underneath it. Oh, no, there's not. That's weird. Felt like there was a card under there. All right. Well, the death card. So that's probably why I was feeling that, you know, something new might be opening up on your path. This is the card of Scorpio. Um, death card speaks about closing of doors, but it is so a rebirth can take place. I mean, that's literally what you'll see on some tarot cards. It'll say death slash rebirth. You know, the one thing I've learned through Tarot, and I've been reading Tarot forever, it feels like, um, is when one door closes, another door is going to open without doubt. It's just learning how to close those doors behind us, you know, like certain chapters just naturally are meant to end and then something new begins. I love the magician right before it. So again, it feels like like re, like you have a lot of power in this. So some type of rebirth is about to take place. I'm going to take. I'm going to give it another shuffle. By the way, a death card. Um, I hate to say the person because it's like a like a skeleton, but um, it's looking right back at the magician. Almost like saying, I'm ready. Are you ready? It's interesting, though, because the magician is also looking back. Hmm. We have the moon. Um, Card of Pisces, ruler of cancer. The moon can talk about uncertainties, for sure. But then again, with the magician here, I feel like, you know, you have a lot of power. And it, it also can talk about not projecting, you know, yourself too far out in the future. Like, you know, we can only move in, you know, according to the moon, to the moon's light. I don't think I said that right. Um, but this is also very dreamy type energy. You know, think of Pisces and even Cancer, your neighbor. Um, you know, very dreamy. Some of you, um, I feel like this can be signs that you're receiving, like when you're sleeping, you're connecting. And, you know, your guides are going to send you signs one way or the other. But sometimes maybe during our waking hours, like, you know, my mind is full. 
uh, yeah, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about that, and I'm thinking about the, you know, closing a door, what should I do? Sometimes I feel like you're connecting to another also, so I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we see that in the reading. I'm going to do one more, one more shuffle. I don't know why. I feel like taking more than three. You know, it feels like you have a lot of say so in what's going to happen next in your life. Um, but it definitely feels like, you know, a door needs to be closed. Maybe some of you have been questioning that. You know, again with the moon, like, hmm. I could be unsure, but yeah, I feel like this is definitely giving you confirmation. And not just confirmation, but I feel like it's trying to show you that you have a lot of power over this rebirth. Okay, maybe else nothing else wants to come out. We'll do it a couple more times. And we have interesting, we have the star. And I'm saying interesting because this is your opposite sign. And um, you came as a sun um, with their major arcana. So now they're showing in your major arcana. The star, though, it is about your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. And, you know, if you just look at the person, first of all, they're naked. And to me, that's a symbol of, like, just being yourself. You know, there's nothing you need to hide about who you are. You know, what it is that you want to manifest. And by the way, the star is mirroring the magician. Again, a lot of power. You know, if I'm trying to manifest, let's say, a dream, a wish, then I feel like, and then you will, you know, but a door does need to be closed again. So, to start, your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. And then using the energy of the magician to really bring them about. The person in the star card is looking out like looking towards the future and it's interesting again because the death card is looking back so it definitely tells me something of your past you know and it could be a cycle you know when i see the moon i think of like moon cycles it could be um you know i'm trying to think we just had um what the blue moon i believe full moon but this may also talk about you know something happening around the moon the full moon but again i feel the energy of like moon cycles all right let's go ahead and give the gilded or not the gilded tarot the universal tarot a couple shuffles and also forget mother mary says Time to bring out that feminine energy, male or female. Could talk about love, nurturing something, especially if it's like a dream that you have. Interesting how I was talking about your dream cycles within the moon, and then the star literally is talking about a dream. All right, let's go ahead and show my deck in the upright. I do. Wow. Okay, so it's like you're answering Mother Mary's call. Here's the Empress. Definitely the feminine side. Um, mother figure. This is someone who is definitely loving and nurturing, but she's also very powerful and strong. You know, one of Mother Mary's cards um, refer to her as someone who is very gentle, 
but powerful. This can talk about your creativity. You know, it's the number three. And for some reason, I tie, create, I tie three to your creativity. So, you know, if you're trying to manifest something into the world, this is great energy to do it with. I feel like the Empress is always receiving epiphanies. Well, let me rephrase that because I feel like we're all of us are receiving epiphanies, ideas, signs. But this is someone who really has learned to trust, let's just say within her spiritual energy, within her own intuition. And this is just really powerful energy for manifesting, again, some type of a dream. I'm going to bring the lid down. We have justice. Interesting. Uh, first of all, Cardaleo, or Libra, sorry. Um, but, you know, I feel like justice, justice is, a, is, to me, quite a few different things in a reading. It is coming under the death card. So I do feel like it is talking about certain ties that may need to be cut. But you know what I love about justice is I feel like as soon as I cut those ties, then I find balance, real balance. This can talk about, you know, maybe if this is relating to, you know, love, something may just, it just may be over. You know what I mean? It may, and it just might be the time. But again, it's so that a rebirth can take place. You know, it doesn't have to relate to love. Um, sometimes I can read this as like karmic energy. And if it is karmic energy, I feel like then I must have learned some type of lesson from the previous energy. And I am allowing myself to have this rebirth. You know, when justice shows up in a reading, I feel like it's about making you whole again. Even if I'm a little hesitant on cutting certain ties, I feel like with the Empress coming first, you know what you know what you know. You know what I mean? Like, you know what needs, what doors need to be closed. But then, you know, what follows that door once it's closed? The star. A dream. A wish. But it's about bringing it into your physical world because it's, it is mirrored by, again, the magician. Okay. Let's keep going. <clears throat> you know, justice is about what's fair and just in your world. We have the Page of Swords. Okay. You know, I read a page as a few different things also. It can certainly talk about younger energy. For some of you, um, you could have been on this path of really learning how to communicate. And that could be because you want to do something like with your voice. You know, I feel like it's saying your voice is important. Um, and maybe someone has shut down your voice. But. You know, it's about bringing it, like, it's understanding the importance of your truth. Because the page is also, to me, energy is in the atmosphere. You know, you could have definitely had some difficult communication. Um, and then I'm thinking, like, Mercury went into retrograde. And uh, that can be a tough time for communication. But I feel like, for, I feel like, some of you are having this realization that, you know, what was just is no longer serving me. So I want to move forward. I want to, I want to start something new, you know, um, coming under the moon. Interesting because, you know, some of you, that's what you've been trying to figure out. Like, is, you know, is my voice, is, is, are other people going to, um, understand what it is I'm trying to say? Hmm. Look at this, the Ace of Wands. Wow. Under the star. 
So this is about inspired action. And by the way, it is mirroring the Empress. The Empress will take this Ace of Wands all day long. You know, it is, you know, something that you're passionate about. Some of you, like, you may have found that your interest has been piqued towards a certain subject, towards a certain, you know, well, wish. And this gives you the opportunity. This is like, here it is. It's showing. In the Ace of Wands, I feel like, you know, ideas, um, it is about, you know, it's desirable energy. There's all this new growth on this wand. Again, I'm shutting this door, but then look at all the new growth on this next door. You know, boy, does it feel like, I hope you guys understand like your ability to manifest again, working hand in hand with divine. And sometimes we just have to realize that certain doors have to close. You know what I mean? Like they just aren't serving us any longer. Um, and I feel like, you know, you've learned from that. So it's not about closing a chapter that was like a, a waste of my time. No, there's something you definitely learned about. Uh, some of you, it's about like learning how to keep your heart open. You know, um, it's about trusting in your creative path. Again, I feel like this Ace of Wands mirroring the Emperor that's also coming right under the star and the Empress coming under the Magician. Boy, that is powerful energy. We have the King of Wands. Can be you. Um, another Leo. Aries, Sagittarius. But it doesn't have to be any of that. You know, for those who've been with me, you understand when I read, I give you the signs, but really what I'm looking at is the energy. And um, first of all, this person looks like they're about to get out of their chair. And they're holding this wand. Well, here is this wand coming under the Empress. I feel like you are the Empress. You know, this could also be you. But for some reason, I'm kind of feeling it as someone else. This king is also mirroring the Emperor right now. Or not the Emperor, the Magician. You know, I feel like some of you could have been in your masculine energy. And um, this Ace of Wands is really going to require you to be more in your feminine energy. And that just means, you know, that I'm going to I'm going to stay my true self, which is loving and nurturing. But again, there's a sense of real power when the Empress shows up because, you know, she's no one's fool. Um, you know, she doesn't need to create walls in her life because she trusts her intuition above all. That means she trusts within her whole spiritual team. Then we have the Eight of Cups. So just as a kind of feeling like, you know, I am cutting some type of ties. Can certainly talk about emotional ties with the Eight of Cups. You know, the Eight of Cups, I feel like First of all, I feel like, you know, you should be proud of yourself because this is about looking within your emotional house. This is, you know, finding clarity over, let's just say, the cups that have, that have been knocked over, but not allowing them to stop me from really living a life of my dreams. You know, and I feel like the Empress and... I don't know. I just felt this energy of like, I don't need to project myself out too far in the future. Like, I don't need to know exactly where this next path is taking me. It just, it just feels like it's going to feel right. So this is walking away. You know, this person's literally walking away from those past cups. And, you know, where are they heading to? They're heading to the nine of cups, which is really inner harmony. So I feel like if anyone's had you kind of tied up in knots, then, you know, enough is enough with that. Eight is also about a new beginning. 
coming under justice, but mirrored by the death card. So that new beginning is a rebirth. It's also the number of infinity. As above, so below. You know, to me, that's a symbol that, you know, a lot of times we forget that we have this whole spiritual team. You know, and what I mean by that is before we even came into this lifetime, we already had a whole spiritual team assigned to us. You know, archangels, angels, spirit guides. I feel like our spirit guides just continue to grow. And I feel like certain spirit guides will send you messages for certain situations. But it does feel like, you know, some type of an emotional cut. Is it this King of Wands? Maybe. You know, he look he's looking back. And then that eight is a new beginning. So, you know, I feel like with the death card here, closing of the door, and the ace of wands is like that new door opening. Part of that, you know, what needs to go does feel like it was of an emotional nature. All right, well, let's keep going. There's your major arcana. Strength card. Another eight, by the way. 88. Some of you may have been born in 88. Know someone who was. Um, you know, this could talk about two new beginnings. And I often feel like when one one door opens, right, which is exactly what's happening, if I allow it, because I feel like I'm the one who has to close that door. I'm the one who does have to cut those ties. I'm the one who's got to say enough is enough, right? But also the willingness to, especially with the death card, to go deep, to look within, you know, this is about really finding your own power, courage, understanding like, you know, what are the things in my life that hold me back, that tempt me, and then the ability to overcome it. You know, a lot of times you'll see this person as like half um, human, half lion. And I feel like that's the courageous part of ourselves. She does have the infinity sign right above her head. As above, so below. You know, another way of saying that is, you know, if we remember that we're spiritual beings having human experiences, then there's nothing that we're going through that we haven't already been through. We have the hermit. So it's like you have both your neighbors here. Cancer to one side, Virgo to the other side. But this is about your spirituality. You know, the hermit number nine is reflection. And I often feel in the hermit's energy that, you know, we could have gone through what they call the dark night of the soul, difficult experiences. Um, and it could have just been one chapter. It could be... You know, with the strength card here, it could be something that, um, you know, tends to keep pulling me back. But I feel like with the reflection of the hermit, you know, the hermit is, you know, I, if, if I'm in the dark night of the soul, what I'm seeking is the light. I'm seeking answers, right? But I'm really seeking spiritual answers for this earthly plane. Some of you could be connected to a Virgo. Um, and I feel like the reflection of the hermit is coming to an end. You know, and what the hermit again is seeking is the light. And what the hermit realizes is, wait a minute, I am the light. I feel like this person, when they do this, this deep reflection, and it is a deep reflection. 
feel like they just naturally become, you know, let's put it a different way. Like, I feel like naturally their healer energy starts to t- starts to come out. You know, this person is shining their beacon of light, really, to help others. You know, a lot of times, not in this car, a lot of times you'll see a little snake down here. And that beacon of light is illuminating that snake. And it's a sense of you don't have to worry, you know, especially once you've had this type of reflection. Some of you are really moving into a spiritual time in your life. And a creative time. You know, I could see many of you being, um, I feel like natural healers, but now potentially using it in your life. Not potentially. Using it. Understanding it. Because it is coming under the Ace of Wands. And Nine is about final reflection. Right? I'm reflecting. And you have the Eight of Cups here also. So, I don't know. I feel like if someone else, let's just say, like, was emotionally unavailable, even if I had wished they were, this is me really having clarity over it. At least I'm saying, okay, I'm not, you know, I I don't know. I feel like, should we wait for people? You know what I mean? Like, should we wait for people who, like, kind of leave us on the hook? I guess, I don't know, I'm a Virgo, and that would be very hard for me. And you know what, Leo? I feel like it would be very hard for you, to be honest. But let's not even go there yet, because I feel like this is just about you you really recognizing your own light. And in the Ace of Wands, it's like, you're going to do something with that. You know, this John card is saying you're finding this courage. And the page of swords, you know, feels like some type of communication. A page can be what's also in the atmosphere. But if it's you questioning like your own voice, voice, your own truth with the moon above it, you know. You may question that, but the hermit would give you that clarity. The Hermit's also illuminating a strength card. Hmm. All right. Let's keep going. As people go right now on the table, we have Scorpio, we have Pisces and Cancer, we have Aquarius, which I'm happy to see because, again, this is exactly the type of reading I'm doing, your opposite sign. Um, We have Libra, we have um, you, and then we have Virgo. Now... Other than that, I kind of want you to just forget all that. (laughs) We have the hangman. And then we have the page of cups. Interesting, we have two pages. So, you know, the page of cups is coming under that eight of cups. And I felt like the Page of Cups is just moving everything up a little bit. Give myself a little bit more room. Um, You know, the Page of Cups is really, to me, the energy of really learning how to love myself. Even if someone else didn't know how to love me. I feel like in the Page of Cups, this is you allowing yourself also to experience new opportunities. Because I feel like in the Eight of Cups, this person's leaving that energy. I feel like you have the reflection that you need to now move forward. Even if I don't know exactly what the outcome will be, you know, what you need to think about is 
we're planting seeds right now. So when, like, sometimes we want to know, like, let's say it's love, like, will it last forever? Well, you're planting those seeds right now. So a lot of it really depends on you and, let's say, the other person. You know, will I be successful um, with this creative idea I have, something I want to bring to the world? Again, you're planting those seeds right now. You know, Page of Cups is also mirroring the death card. Some of you could certainly be a younger Scorpio. But then we do have the hangman right before that. And the hangman is kind of like a pause in the action. And I don't know why, but at this moment, I'm feeling like this king. Though I do know for some of you, it's you. But... I feel like more for the majority, this may talk about someone who I may be closing a door to. And why? Well, I feel like with the page of cups here, I feel like maybe they didn't appreciate who I was on a soul level. You know, if somebody is telling you that you need to change all these things about you, I just don't call that love. Like, love on their terms, but not on your terms. And justice, right? Cutting ties. But the cutting of those ties, what it does for you is it balances you. It gives you balance in your life again. And I feel like when justice shows up in a reading, it is about making you whole again. You know, and then I feel like this page of cups, listen, it could talk about with the hangman coming first, taking the time you need to really, you know, really learn to love yourself again. And that just means to appreciate who you are. It doesn't mean you're perfect. None of us are perfect. You know, and that's the one thing we don't want to shoot for, you know, and that, that's something like a Virgo is looking for perfection, but they'll never find it. I know that because I'm a Virgo. Um, but I feel like this may say, you know, as I, as I use the sickle of the death card and I close that door, I cut those ties and I allow this rebirth, you know, it doesn't mean I need to move quickly. Maybe I do need to say, take some time to really get to know me again. Be proud of who I am right now. Again, the Empress, loving, nurturing, powerful, strong. The ability to manifest off the charts. Her creativity, I say her, can be also him, but their creativity off the charts. And I feel like the Empress is like her interest is being piqued, but it does feel like, again, something of a dream. Something of a wish. So, I feel like, you know, you take whatever time you need to really start to come back to you again. Now, again, ages can be what's also in the atmosphere. So, it can talk about love. You know, maybe I'm starting to feel it. It just, maybe it hasn't arrived yet. The hangman is seeking wisdom, much like the hermit. I'm seeking, and but the, the hangman is like, I'm not moving until I have this wisdom. And that's why I'm saying, like, you know, if you need to take your time with something, take your time. Don't let anybody rush you. Don't rush yourself. <clears throat> Hmm. You really have a nice mix of energy on the table. Whoa. Okay. Well, we can't take all those, but we do have one that flipped over. So we will take that. And it makes perfect sense, the world. 
you know, the world's the next chapter. And I do feel like, you know, this is about starting a new chapter. What I love about the world is I feel like this is a very spiritual time, not just a spiritual time. I feel like this is when, especially with the her the hermit here, right? Seeking spiritual wisdom, as so is the hangman. Spiritual wisdom. So, a very spiritual time in your life. But I feel like it is for the rest of your life. You know, I feel like the world doesn't show until you're ready for the world to show. So, a new chapter. But look at the beautiful energy you have um, to manifest whatever it is you want to manifest. You know, be realistic, yes. Understand that, you know, you may not know exactly what the outcome will be, but it feels like it is the beginning of something. Again, this Ace of Wands has this new growth on it. The next chapter. To me, it means that a door has been closed. And it definitely feels like it served you to close it. Jeez. All right. Well, I certainly wasn't going to take this many cards, but well, hello, Knight of Cups. Unexpected couple fulfillment. And many of you know what I feel about knights. Like they will complete their mission. Whether I choose to accept it or not is up to me. So I love that it's mirroring also the star card. Some of you may be falling back in love. Maybe you put a pause on that for a while. But I feel like when you're ready, you're ready. I love that this is also following the world. So to me, it signifies that it is the next chapter. It is the next chapter. But how beautiful that it's also mirroring the star. And I just love that it's following the world. All right, let's take these. We have the Queen of Cups, and then we have the Queen of Swords. Interesting. Um, you know, I often feel that when we see a lot of people on the board, often I feel it's us. It's just the different parts of ourselves. Now, it can certainly represent people for some of you. Um, so the Queen of Cups could be... Uh, Scorpio, we have Scorpio, Cancer, we have Cancer, uh, Pisces, well, this is the ruler, the moon is the ruler of Pisces, then we have the Queen of Swords, can be Gemini, we don't have that yet, Libra, right here, Aquarius, we have that right there, let's see what came out with that, the Death card again, and then the Knight of Wands, Wow. So it's like I close that door of the death card, right? I close that door. I allow this rebirth to take place. And then the Knight of Wands, again, I'm going to complete my mission. This is about passion, desire. It can be very fast moving. It can move so fast that it makes me a little nervous. Interesting, it's coming under these two queens. Um, and a death card coming under the Queen of Cups. Some of you, you may be, you, you may relate back to a Scorpio, but it doesn't have to be that. I want you to understand that, you know, and then I'm looking at how we have the page of swords and now we have the queen of swords evolution. We have the page of cups and then we have the queen of cups, you know, real growth, trying to find my own voice, the clarity within it trusting within it in the page of cups you know learning to love myself again and learning to love myself means that i'm not going to stop opportunities you know yeah. i mean real life are it is about chapters you know and we do run in nine year cycles 
And we really do have to learn like when a cycle is meant to end. Yes, reflect upon it. Just gain the wisdom of it. You know, again, the magician, that's exactly what the magician teaches the fool. The fool's first mentor is a magician. You already possess everything you need to be successful. You just want to trust in yourself. So interesting, we have the Knight of Cups, unexpected couple fulfillment. And then the Knight of Wands, something, it feels like as soon as I shut that door, something else comes in very quickly. But I feel like the Empress has control of that. And what I mean by that is I don't feel like the Empress would look at this in a fearful way because I trust my intuition. I trust my intuition. So, you know, whatever this new growth is on this wand, on this ace of wands, I'm just going to trust, right? Again, it's attached to a dream, a wish. I kind of feel like this King of Wands may be part of what's leaving, but feels like probably meant to. You know, this King of Wands, for some of you, could be someone who um, just kind of just took no action. And the King of Wands really is an action-oriented king, but he is looking at the past. Um, And I don't know, you know, like, I don't want to, like, put down this king because but part of me is feeling like uh you know let's say that this king had me in like this waiting period to decide whether they're going to love me or not well listen you either love me or you don't you know like what do you need to think about you accept me who for who I am or you don't All right, let's look at the bottom of the deck. Well, hello, Destiny. Hello, Destiny. So, you know, this is good a good omen that that closing of the door is just moving you into a destined period of your life. To me, that means that it, this is about a soul's intention that wants to manifest. It feels like it's the right time. It's divine timing. Ten of Pentacles under that. Wow. I kind of love that with the Empress being here. You know, can I create true abundance for myself? I feel like absolutely. And maybe that's exactly what you're meant to do. To me, the Ten of Pentacles, you know, could signify you're not alone in that energy. I feel like the Ten of Pentacles is really a house of loyalty. You know, a house that takes root, um, probably is rooted in past lives and probably will also be rooted in future, you know, in the future, in future lives. And I don't know why I always pick this up with the Ten of Pentacles, but I feel like, you know, it, let's say I'm creating something like, you know, I'm creating a business for myself. And again, it would be something that's, that is creative, like you would feel you know, you would feel the epiphanies. Your interest would be piqued. And that could be what the hangman is about. Maybe I don't want love at this moment. But it doesn't mean love still won't show up. You know, I don't feel like we have a whole lot of control over that. You know, um, just look back at your life. Like, you know, when you have fallen in, fallen in love, it's not something you planned. It just happened. All right, let's bring in the Guild of Tarot and let's just go ahead and go deeper here. So the first thing I want to say, as it relates to your opposite side, I feel like your reading is much easier um, than Aquarius's was. Theirs was quite difficult. But it's almost like you have, you know, maybe you've been through the same energy that they've gone through, but I feel like you've evolved past it now. All right, let's give him a cut, introduce him into the reading. And we're going to start at the beginning. 
Gonna just readjust my chair and grab a drink real quick. I feel like I'm losing my voice. Maybe that's how some of you feel. All right. Wow. Hello, lovers. Right over the magician. And, you know, it is the card of Gemini, by the way. The meaning of the card is the head over heart decision. And I could see that, right? I could definitely see that. But I have to say, you know, if you just look at this image, you can see the feminine in the present, present day moment, right? Just like the empress. But you see the masculine behind her. Hasn't quite, like, the energy is there, but the person isn't there yet. But I can feel them. Some of you, you might be connecting to someone in your dreams. And you know what? I feel like, and you just might be manifesting them without even knowing that. You might be manifesting each other. Hello, lovers. You know, interesting that the lovers is the first made or the first card that comes out with the Gilded Tarot. And the Knight of Cups is the last card with the Universal Tarot. It's almost like picking it up from that point. And I feel like if you feel you're in the Empress's energy, which again means that your heart is open, you are loving and nurturing, but you're also powerful and strong. You found courage within yourself. You know, you cut ties to, again, the people or situations that just weren't serving you. You know, maybe had you kind of stuck for a while. But I feel like as the Empress, I'm not creating any walls. What will be, will be. Doesn't naturally uh, ne necessarily mean that I move directly into this energy, but I'm not going to shut it down either. Maybe I maybe it means I'm just going to give this Knight of Cups an opportunity and hear what they have to say. We have the Page of Wands, my little risk taker. A little risk taker. <laughs> um, Page of Wands, you know, we do have the King of Wands. And it can talk about, again, someone's younger energy for sure. But because it's coming over the death card, I feel like if it is, you know, it could be someone that I was connected to that for whatever the reason, um, you know, because I feel like normally the King of Wands is someone who puts actions behind their words. Like, I don't just say I love you. I show you that I love you. You know, if this is anything to do with opportunity, same thing. I don't promise you the world and then show you nothing. But I feel like really for the majority, this is you. And this is about taking a chance. You know, I often feel this is your younger energy, even in other people's readings. Um, and, you know, the page of wands is someone to me who does take chances in life. And, you know, yes, they don't all work out. But this is someone who does get back up again. Right. I'm learning that. I'm learning how to get back up on the horse. That page is looking right over at the lovers. Well, hello, Ten of Cups. Hello, House of Love. House of Harmony. By the way, it is coming over the moon. But it is mirroring the world. I feel like very quickly this is turning into a love reading. But not just a love reading, because I also feel like there's, there's like ideas 
that are just naturally going to be put in your head, so to speak. You know, but it feels like good karma is coming your way. And I feel like that good karma is coming your way because you were bold enough to find the clarity of the past that you needed. You know, you're not judging yourself. Somebody else wants to judge you. Well, then so be it. But you're not taking that on. You know, this is really the house of love, house of laughter. We have a lot of pages and it can certainly talk about like, you know, allowing that inner child within me to come out. And then we have the emperor. Card of Aries. But you know what I'm going to say. Doesn't have to be Aries. You know, you have the emperor now with the empress. And they are my power couple. You know, I feel like this is someone where we're seeing the feminine's energy. And Mother Mary is actually asking us to allow our feminine energy to come out. And in the lovers, we see the masculine energy, though it hasn't reached us yet. Wow, I kind of feel like here it is. And I love that it's following the Ten of Cups. So let's talk a little bit about the Emperor. This is someone who... um Normally, it's someone we can look up to. You know, I definitely feel like the emperor has their shit together. This could be someone who owns their own business. Um, and coming over the ace of wands and the star. You know, but let's take love out of love out of it for a second. This is a this is a great omen again for those who are creating, let's just say, new businesses for yourself. It feels like, you know, you're evolving as it relates to um, just what you do in the world. But he is also mirroring this Knight of Cups. So, unexpected couple fulfillment. And let me tell you, I feel like if you've been dealing with someone who, like, lives within their lower vibrational energy, and as you yourself evolve which is exactly what looks like is happening. Well, those who have a lower vibrational energy, it's like, you know, the universe naturally wants them to fade away. Where our humanness comes in is we tend to pull it back to us. But maybe that's just a lesson we need to learn. But man, this is my power couple. And they're in the same line. It just tells me that if this is speaking of love, this truly is someone who, you know, I can definitely look up to. You know, the emperor and the empress definitely complete each other, but they are different. You know, the emperor is someone who's methodical, likes to put a plan in place. The empress is someone who is just more creative, um, you know, takes these epiphanies and puts them to use. But it doesn't mean she doesn't take her time. <clears throat> I think, I feel like part of this message is about, you know, it's not about how quickly something opens up and evolves because both of the emperor and the empress are someone who, you know, they feel comfortable in what they do. Both of them are definitely energies of caring about their fellow man. And they may do it in different ways, but it's really the same result. Your reading is kind of night and day versus Aquarius's. So I kind of feel like Aquarius may get more out of your reading than anything. But let's keep going. I mean, it's looking good. But it's looking good, really, in all areas of your life. You know what it feels like to me, Leo? It's like, like good karma for your acts of kindness. 
you know, the things that you've been doing in the world, it's like, you know, the universe has been noticing that, you know, think about like the law of attraction. It's the energy that I'm putting out into the universe. That's what the universe must meet. Well, the emperor and the empress are of a higher vibration. They just are. It's really when, and I feel like, listen, I feel like the empress has had the experiences of, experiences of all the queens. And that may be why we're seeing all these queens, right? Like I've been there. I've done that. I've overcome that. And then naturally it's like, I want to help others. I want to help others to overcome the things that I had to overcome. The emperor is the same way. But the emperor may say, well, let me help you put a plan in place. We have the five of wands coming over this king of wands. So I kind of feel like I was reading that right. And by the way, again, it doesn't have to be a fire sign. I feel like literally what it's saying, because the hangman's underneath this king. And again, it can be a queen. Um, but I feel like it's, again, someone who just did not put actions behind their words. You know, could have promised you the world. But what did they bring you? Drama. Ego. That's what the Five of Wands talks about. Battling type energy. It is a five, and a five stands for change. So, you know, I could have certainly got pulled down into their energy. And um, realize it's not serving me. It's not helping me to evolve in my life. Matter of fact, it could be doing the opposite. It could have stopped you from trusting within your own abilities. You know, I feel like the one thing in the five of wands we don't want to do is allow ourselves to get pulled into other people's drama. I feel like what we have to do is leave it. And I feel like that's why it's a five. You know, it is mirroring also the hermit. So maybe some of you have had this deep reflection like, okay, king. You just keep bringing drama into my life and it's just not the way I want to live my life. You know, unfortunately, I feel a lot in this energy. Like if I expect someone to back down, if I expect someone to say, you know what, you are right and really mean it. I was wrong and really mean it. I'm not going to get it in this energy. It's too much ego. But then look at this, the magician, right over the eight of cups. So let's just put it this way. Whatever people, energy, love, that was not interested in living within a higher vibrational energy, they got to go. Magician coming over the Eight of Cups, again, it feels like that energy of good karma. You know, if nothing else, it's like the drama is over. Whew. I don't have to live in that anymore. Right now, I'm creating the life that I want to create for myself. Mirroring the death card, right? Closing up that door. A rebirth. And your ability... To really manifest the type of life you want. Also coming under that page of wands. Taking chances. You know, not all of them pay off. But maybe this one will. Look at the infinity sign. It's like you can't miss it. All right, let's keep going. Well, hello, divine timing. So, you know, I really didn't need to control any of this. All I needed to do 
was let go of what was what was not serving me. Understand, you know, that again, if I got pulled in someone else's drama, that maybe the only solution was to leave it. You know, it's coming over as strength card, your energy. So it's about being courageous. You know, your own power. Temperance is about patience, first and foremost. But it's also about divine timing. All good things in their time. Also, connected to the world, the next chapter. So to me, it feels like divine timing is probably now. And then the Ten of Cups right above it. I'm not going to say the Ten of Cups is like immediate, but the chances of working towards that seem very good, especially with the Knight of Cups. The next chapter opening up, the reflection that I've had over the past, no longer accepting other people's drama, the Empress, loving, nurturing, powerful, strong, with the lovers and the magician, the masculine who hasn't quite reached us yet, but then I feel like, well, that's what the emperor is. Also called a Sagittarius, by the way. Five of Cups. Interesting that you have two fives mirroring each other. Five of Wands, drama. Drama field. Five of Cups. You know, the Five of Cups, you're reflecting upon that in the Hermit's energy. And in the Five of Cups, this is when, um, you know, I'm really looking at the cups that have been knocked over. This person's like literally focusing on those cups. And the only danger in that energy is I don't want to get lost in it. You know, I don't want to think that there's only one person who can love me the way I deserve. And I don't feel like this person did. Or maybe isn't even capable. So five, right? I want you to consider change. Not focusing on what you've lost, but instead think about what is yet to gain. Well. In this energy, what's yet to gain are two cups. And that is a soulmate. And I love that it's kind of following temperance. So divine timing. Sometimes the universe is waiting on us. You know, maybe just having that realization. Like, if I've been waiting for someone, again, to be who I really had hoped they would be, it just probably won't happen. But temperance is like, well, my dear, you don't understand what's yet to be. And maybe you can't understand it until it starts to show itself. Five, change. When this person makes that change, you know, what's the danger of the five of cups? It can turn into woe is me. Why didn't that person love me? Am I not worthy? Did they tell me I wasn't worthy? You know, did they promise me the world but show me nothing? Is that what I want to accept? I feel like the answer is no, no, no. But yes, it was important that you did reflect upon it. You know, through the hermit's energy. And to me, that means through a spiritual lens. And, you know, this person doesn't even know that these two cups are behind them. They don't realize that until they make the change. But temperance, divine timing. Well, she knows that. And there is that knight of cups, right?
You know, it's funny when I get certain people on the table, it's like I can feel whether, I don't know if I want to say good or bad, um, but let's just say, or good for you. And usually I can feel it pretty quickly. Um, I just don't like to say it like without a little bit of proof. And I feel like these two fives are giving us the proof. All right. Like there's a piece of hair connected. We have the four of pentacles over the hangman. Some of you could have been living with someone. But same situation. You know, justice can certainly represent like a divorce. And I am not saying go get a divorce. That has to be your decision. You know, I'm never going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to present you the energy. You know, the only danger within the Four of Pentacles is sometimes I can hold on to something too tightly. And that may be what the hangman is talking about. Like, you know, maybe I've given someone a lot of my time. Maybe I thought I could change them. Make them better. You know, because that's my natural energy. I want to see everyone do well. But not everyone is in that energy. Not everybody wants to do, you know, life the way you want them to do it. And I don't mean that as judgment, by the way. That sounded a little judgy. Well, hello, Ace of Pentacles. <clears throat> wow. So... Literally, when I tell you through the death card, because it is mirroring the death card, when one door closes, another door will open. I really mean it. And I know that just from my own experiences. And I know that from reading Tarot for so long. Ace of Pentacles means something that's coming into your physical world. And it's interesting because it's underneath the Eight of Cups. So again, I've had that reflection. I'm walking away from it. I'm finding my inner harmony again, coming over the page of cups, really learning to love myself again. The death card, I'm allowing a rebirth. Ace of Pentacles is like, well, just especially with temperance here, like, okay, this is divine timing. It is now time for it to enter your world. And I feel the Ace of Pentacles is like a seed, you know, I kind of love that the Empress is here because with this seed, I'm either going to love it, nurture it, and, you know, give it the time, the effort that it needs, and then it really has the opportunity to truly blossom, or I can just let it dry up and die. But I don't think that's going to happen. So I feel like this is giving some of you, like, you know, it's saying that this probably, again, that masculine energy, male or female, um, it literally is coming into your world. But not just that. Like, I want you to understand, I can feel both. Like, I can feel your creativity, um, your money increasing. You know, I feel like the Ace of Pentacles many times is the way. It gives us the way. We have the Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands is about standing your ground. But I feel like you already did that. And then I feel like sometimes we got to know, like, you know, what am I standing my ground against? Again, if it's this energy, this king, this caring, this drama, you know, probably really has broken my heart emotionally, you know. Is that worth the fight? I don't think so. And then I feel the other side of it where 
you know, what you have learned through your own experiences where I feel like it can be you because seven is a very spiritual number also. So, and it's coming over a very spiritual card, the world. So I could definitely see you like helping other people, helping other people put out the fires in their life. King of Wands again. Interesting. We'll have to come back. I don't feel like that's the same King of Wands, to be honest. Actually, I feel like it's probably more you. Well, hello, Ace of Cups. Look at that, the Ace of Cups. So, this night, it says, I'm bringing in this cup of fulfillment. It wasn't kidding. Here it is. This is really unconditional love. You know what I'm noticing also? Look at the moons. Like the moon cycle. And I felt that within that moon. Like something move, moving within moon cycles. And then the Knight of Wands again. But now the Knight of Wands is on the table. It's following that Ace of Cups. You know, I feel like what it's saying when this Knight of Cups, first of all, the Ace of Pentacles. And I feel like the Ace of Pentacles is, I do feel like it's talking about potential love coming in your life. But I also feel like it's your ability to grow your own life. You know, it's like the way. And boy, do you have power to manifest. And in the star card, it's not just one dream. You know, and I find it interesting because, <clears throat> like, you know, I'm trying to think of your reading last month, but I know a lot of people have been through some very difficult energy. And your reading really feels light, you know, blessed, like good karma. The Ace of Pentacles and the Ace of Cups. And then the Knight of Wands. So it can be something that does happen quickly. It is mirroring the Ten of Cups, by the way. But it's also coming over the world. This is full of passion, desire. You know, I feel like it would almost be impossible for, impossible for me to ignore it. But this night again, is carrying the Ace of Pentacles in. Interesting, at this night, same night, Knight of Wands, is looking back at the Death card. So it's almost like this passion being held back until a certain door has been closed, and then I allow myself to have this rebirth. You know, and I may not even know what that means. All I know is that I'm raising my own vibration. I've done my own work. I've gone deep within myself. I know who I am now is on a spiritual level, or at least I'm trusting in that more and more. And then I feel like it's just opening up. Well, some of these dreams that you had, but bringing them into your reality, but, you, but also the power that you have and probably the realization that you now have of how you can bring this about, right? Remembering that we're planting seeds right now, right? Again, think of the law of attraction. What intentions am I putting out to the universe? All right. Um, I just want to look at this king over this night. We have the Seven of Swords. Interesting. You know, one of the reoccurring messages I've been finding in the readings this month is right when we, like, you know, let's say, again, I've, I've given this king time with the hangman underneath it. I've given them time. Right, time to be who they say they're going to be. 
you know, love me how they said they were going to love me, but it doesn't happen, you know, or it happens and then it stops and then it happens and then it stops. And what I've been finding is, you know, to me, that could be a karmic lesson. And I find that, you know, it could be like one final test from the universe. So when you say you close this door, did you really? Because I feel like with the Seven of Swords over this king, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, because I feel like the Empress and the Emperor are who the lovers are. And I would not be surprised if, like, right when you start to, like, find your footing again, you know, right when you start to potentially meet someone who, listen, we have the Ten of Cups here. So it could be someone and the world, by the way, in the same line, it could be someone that you do end up spending the rest of your life with. You know, but you want to remember your power in that, right? It's thinking the magician. You know, I'm not guaranteed the Ten of Cups. But if I keep putting, you know, positive energy into whatever it is I want to bring to the world, well, then I feel like that's what's going to help you, you know, find that Ten of Cups. Or it gives, I feel like the Emperor and the Empress a much better chance of really taking this for the rest of their lives. But. The recurrent theme is someone coming back who didn't treat us right. And, you know, again, there's a lot of ego over here. So I could see where someone would be like, well, you know, it's almost like they don't want to see you happy. But it could also be like one final test from the universe. All right, I want to follow that a little bit more. You know, you have free will. Look at this. First of all, the Nine of Pentacles. I kind of love that for you. This is, the meaning of this card is successful self-employment. <clears throat> Um, you know, who's the benefactor of the Nine of Pentacles? You are. It's the work and the effort you put into something. But if you question it, you know, and let's just follow the line, the star, and then the Ace of Wands, the Hermit, and then the Knight of Cups. Independent nature. And maybe that's what I needed to find, right? I needed to, to feel that I could stand on my own two feet. I can create the life I want for myself. This really is the energy of abundance. And don't forget, we did see the Ten of Pentacles. But maybe for right now, it is about like really feeling comfortable, you know, within your life, really creating abundance for yourself. And then the Ten of Wands again. Not again, but the Ten of Wands. So I kind of feel like this, you know, this almost feels like a karmic lesson. And it's like the universe is going to say, I'm going to test you one more time. Just to make sure that you really did close that door. Ten of Wands is energy I definitely want to close the door on. You know, if I questioned it, will this king change? Well, first of all, filled with drama. Then you get the Seven of Swords over the same king. That Seven of Swords talks about deception and envy. And then you get the Ten of Wands. So it's like, does it change? No. Matter of fact, it feels like it would only get worse. Ten of Wands means that you've been carrying something all on your own you know it's like backbreaking it can talk about a relationship where you've put in all the effort and someone else didn't 
And maybe I wished and hoped that things would change. But listen, I feel like you yourself have changed. So I feel like if this is like the final test, I feel like you're going to pass it. Okay, I want to pick this up, though. And I'm going to look at that again now, because I do feel like that for, you know, and maybe not for everyone, but I do feel like it is saying that you know, like it's, it is the universe kind of testing you, especially with temperance here, right? Divine timing. Are you truly ready? Have you truly closed this, the doors that just aren't serving you anymore? We have the five of pentacles. Interesting, three fives connected. Five of pentacles can feel like a tower moment. Um, you know, a lot of times it's something that happens outside of my control. And that's difficult, no doubt. But what I often feel in the Five of Pentacles is when I accept this change, because again, it is a five. It's moving me into soulmate energy of all different forms. Not just love, you know, like the right people just come along at the right time. It's like this Ace of Pentacles. It comes in just when you need it. But I feel like you deserve it at the same time. It may be asking you, are you going to be ready for this? The Ace of Swords. Wow. You know, the Ace of Swords to me, number one is my Yes card. But the Ace of Swords, and by the way, it's also in the same line as the Ace of Wands. But to me, this is your own truth. Your own integrity. And, you know, even though, again, you may have someone who makes a repeat appearance... It is up to you whether you say yes or no to it. But I feel like because the hermit is here, like you must have reflected upon it. You know, it's it, like, I feel like, especially because the Knight of Pentacles also came out. Like when I find like this true sense of independence within myself, very hard then, like it's almost impossible then to give that away. Maybe your voice, you may be telling them to hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. what you say? <laughs> All right. Um, what else do I want to look at? Hmm. I mean, I love you have these two aces together. I mean, you have three aces. The ace of wands, inspired action. The ace of pentacles, coming into your physical world. It is something of a dream. I wish that does manifest. It's got the magician right above it. Page of wands, the willing to take a chance. And then the ace of cups under that. I do feel like it is talking about a different type of love, a higher vibrational love, but also a love of what you do. You know, it's like loving life again after the fact. So let's look at temperance that is talking about divine patience or divine timing. Let's see if there's anything else but temperance wants to say here. You know, she's right in between the magician and the five of cups. So I feel like divine timing is just 
really, it lies in your hands. Sometimes it's hard to let go of someone that you may have feelings for, but they themselves just can't be who you'd hope they'd be. You know, and I feel like we got to learn not to put the blame on ourselves. Interesting. She brings that to tower. Now, I feel like this is more you. Because I feel like if someone's making a repeat appearance, this is you giving them the tower. I feel like temperance is saying, just know, understand that there are people in the world who are going to make you these promises. To tr they're going to try to keep you hanging on that hook. And it's you who's got to set yourself free. And that is the power of the tower. You know, I often feel in the tower, like literally someone's falling there. I feel like they're falling from grace. I do not feel it's you. I feel the opposite for you. I do feel like it's taken time. But that's okay. I, I don't feel like temperance is any rush, right? Divine timing is divine timing. So whenever the timing is right, the timing is right. But I, I just wouldn't be surprised if there's just one final test. One final test. And it really has to be left up to you. Right? That is your free will. But I feel like temperance is trying to give you some advice here. <laughs> if I expect there to be change, you know, and when I say that, doesn't mean that someone from the past can't come back and love us and love us, you know, to the end of time. But it feels like the person here feels a little bit incapable of that. And again, I don't feel like it's you. I feel like it's them. But I do need to claim my own power, right? I do need to say, this is just not the way I want my, my life to look. I know that I have the ability to create, you know, true success for myself. And I know that the perfect person is out there. I just have to believe that. And that's kind of what the person in the Five of Cups has to realize, right? I can focus on what I have lost all day long. But it's not going to bring me, you know, what I had hoped for. But when I stop focusing on that, literally there are two cups. So it's like one final test from the universe. I feel like this Ace of Swords, let's just say this person does make a repeat appearance. And by the way, why? Because I feel like you feel like you've got your shit together now. You understand like the power you have within yourself to really create, you know, and even if I'm not thinking of love right at this moment, what I am thinking about is, you know, what I want to bring to the world. The wishes that I want to bring into my reality. And I feel like as your vibration lifts, it's just natural that the universe wants those who are in a layer of vibrational energy to fade away. So that's feel, that feels like what the test is. Am I going to buy what they're selling again? Or am I going to tell them my truth? All right. One final go around. And I'm not really going to look at anything. I'm just going to be open to any other messages that want to come out. Come out now. Come on out.
Okay, quite a bit we're going to take a king of cups we have the queen of cups three of cups or three swords the eight of wands the devil card of capricorn and then the king of pentacles so for some of you could certainly represent a capricorn So, what's right in the middle of all that, the Three of Swords. And then the Eight of Wands following that. What I think about, I bring about. What I think about, I bring about. You know, the devil represents lower vibrational energy, temptation. King of Cups kind of feels to me like, you know... Someone who, let's just say normally, loves love. But, listen, I was married to the King of Cups, and um, he gave his cup to everyone <laughs> over and over. And it really was me who had to end that, no longer accept that. And it hurt. You know, it's probably one of the most painful things. Well, I don't know if I want to say it's the most painful, but it is pain. It is hurt. But it feels like, to me, it's literally because someone is just comfortable in their lower vibrational energy. I feel like what this is saying is, as it relates to love, that if I expect something to be different with the same this same person... I just feel like over and over it's saying it won't be. So I need to tell the universe I'm ready for something new. I'm open to what is next. Doesn't mean I'm jumping right into it. But because this page of wands, my risk taker is looking right back at the lovers. I don't feel like I'm going to shut it down either. You know, and the empress has learned how to keep her heart open, her heart open. But she is also someone who's really learned to trust her intuition. I feel like that's what the Ace of Swords is also representing. Again, someone who has no problem breaking my heart. Am I going to keep allowing them to do it? And if I'm someone who's put a lot of work in, let's just say, in myself, that just naturally lifts your vibration. And the law of attraction again. When you are in a higher vibration, well, higher vibrational energy will come back to you. By the way, all those wands are pointing to the emperor. And I am not just reading him as an Aries. I'm reading him as someone that I feel the Empress. I don't know. I feel I could make a home with. You know, they could collaborate with each other. You know, it's interesting. We saw the Ten of Pentacles under the world or under the under the wheel, which is destiny. And by the way, destiny does doesn't just include all the loving, beautiful energy. It also includes the lessons. You know, our soul came here to expand. And that expansion comes through some difficult lessons sometimes. And I feel like when we realize that, right, it's like, why can't everything just be right? Well, maybe it can be, but I need to think about, like, what am I thinking about? Why do I want to give myself to someone? who I already know, like, I feel like on a soul level, you know that the same energy will just keep coming back. How long am I going to do that? You know, the King of Pentacles is someone, when they look at life, they look at the big picture down. And that may be part of what this is asking you to do. Like, look at the big picture.
Hmm. All right. We have the high priestess on the bottom of the deck, your intuition. You know, if nothing else, that's the one thing that the Empress has learned to do. Trust her intuition above all. You know, the high priestess, the intuition is a gift. It is the ability to recognize signs and then put them into action. It is the ability, if something comes towards me, let's just say is of a lower vibration, I don't need to build walls to protect myself. My intuition is going to let me know. And that's the truth. My intuition will let me know. Also, I feel like this is saying, trust your intuition as it relates to what you want to bring to the world, what you want to do in the world. Even if you get a thousand no's or someone's saying like, oh, you won't be successful. What do they know? What do they know? Trust your intuition. All right. I am going to take a Mother Mary um, or whatever wants to come out over this reading. So. Let's get Mother Mary's final words of wisdom. And then we'll let it be. You know, this feels to me like, like when this next chapter opens, I, I feel like this may be really the best time of your life. And yes, it did come after some hard lessons. And if they were karmic and you've moved on from them, you have paid karma off for life, for eternity. You're not giving yourself away to just anybody any longer. They have to earn it. And if they can't earn it, you know, in other, in other words, like, they must have integrity. I feel like one more wants to come out. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, we had quite a few flip over. And I know it's a lot, but I'm going to take them. <clears throat> well, I realize we have quite a bit. But let's read what it says. Giving and receiving. I feel like that's been one of the lessons. You know, learning that there should be equal give and take. And I definitely feel like for some of you, you've been the giver. And someone else has been the taker. And this is now learning that lesson that I deserve to receive as much as I want to give. I also want to receive. And I don't mean that even on an ego level, but it is a fact like you should be receiving. All right. I balance being generous and receptive because both are equally important. Patience, temperance. I don't even have to look at it. I trust in divine timing. I trust in divine timing. Holy crap, we have a lot. Sign, sun, everywhere, sun. Beautiful. I love. I love this image. I love this message. I watch for, notice, and trust the signs that heaven continuously sends. Interesting, it's following trusting in divine timing. Children. Some of you may be working with children. You know, the empress, the mother figure, the emperor, the father figure. My heart is filled with love for children, which creates miracles and positive changes for them and me. Some of you, that may be an avenue that you're stepping into. Well, hello, marriage. I mean, come on. 
We have the Ten of Cups. We have the Ace of Cups. We have the Knight of Cups. We have the Ace of Pentacles. And we have the Lovers. I make a commitment to a healthy relationship with God, myself, and my partner. I feel like the signs are bringing two people together. Be strong. I pull myself up and do what needs to be done. Open your heart. The energy of the Empress and the Emperor. I allow myself to feel the full range of emotions, especially all forms of love. You know, that's what I, in a way, I was trying to say. That as love is related, there's different vibrations of love. Some are a lower vibration, but some are on a higher vibration. And last but not least, gratitude. As I notice and appreciate my blessings, I open the door to more of God's gifts. I open the door to more of God's gifts. Closing a door, opening a new door. Reasons to be grateful. Learning to find art at give and take. Trusting in divine timing. Divine is sending you signs. Very clear. And if they, they don't feel clear, ask for a sign to be sent again. I feel like be strong is that Ace of Pentacles. It's helping you. I feel like this Emperor and Empress with the Ten of Cups. You know, it's like the Four of Wands, which they call the marriage card. But it doesn't have to be marriage. But it is commitment. Opening my heart. And gratitude. As I notice and appreciate my blessings, I open the door to more of God's gifts. Amen. Amen. This is like the evolution of Leah. And everything that you've learned. And even the karmic lessons. Right? But now, just like I felt in the very beginning of this reading, it feels like this is a period of time where now it feels like good karma. And, you know, I don't feel like this is just for the month of September. I feel like this is for the rest of your life. Now, I guess it depends on each one of us, like how quickly things open up. And I feel like, you know, a lot of that's going to depend on when I close the door. And understanding your power to manifest your dreams. Like, don't give that away. Do not not believe in that. You know, your guides, I feel like the signs are so that you can live what feels like a very bountiful and blessful life. I feel like the days, I you know, I want to say a struggle, I feel like they're coming to an end. It doesn't guarantee you that there won't be any more challenges or obstacles but what used to feel like mountains now feel like molehills. Where fear raises ugly head, now I can walk right through it. The evolution of Leo. Amen. I love you guys so much. Truly. You know, Really, this is so different than um, your opposite sign. And I have a feeling it's more about them watching. But you could watch theirs and and probably understand it on a soul level. Like, oh, yeah, I've been there. Because I feel like very quickly it's showing how you yourself have evolved. And then, you know, I feel like naturally... Why wouldn't all these good things start to happen? Especially if you are, you know, again, think of that law of attraction. You're putting those intentions out there. Your vibration has lifted. 
the universe is going to meet you right where you're at. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I could go on and on and on, I swear. Um, September readings have been extra long, but again, I give them whatever time they need. Um, some will settle in and, you know, watch it to the end. Some don't have the patience. And um, to each their own, to each their own. But I feel like the signs are going to guide you. And if nothing else, take that away from the reading. You know, the signs are going to help guide you. All right, guys, I love you. I thank you. I can't wait to read your comments. Um, I can't wait to see where you're at within this reading. I already know some of you are still dealing with someone who, you know, let's just say is difficult. And I feel like this is to show you you know, there is another side. The grass is greener on the other side. So, please, leave me your comments. And I feel like your comments help others who may, you know, let's say you've evolved from that. Well, your comments can certainly help others see that that grass is greener on the other side. I know that from my own life. But when you're in it, it can be difficult. But once you're you once you move out of it and then you look back, you're like, wow, what was I thinking? But it's not about judging yourself. It's about realizing how much you have grown. And then that law of attraction. I love you. I will see you next time at our table. Bye bye.